Hi everybody, you're now experiencing the Gretna Bill Show. So we both have the same cups. I'm, of course, dark blue. John is white. I take offense to that. Porch and pantry and both cups today. You ran out of cups finally, huh? Cool. Greg Billy show. Locked and loaded. Last week of the Velta. So unfortunately, I was so busy yesterday that I didn't see the final stage. So, uh, but we won't go there just yeah, yet. Yeah, we'll Let's, get there. Where do, where do we start it? We started, it's, we ended last week with the second rest day, uh, and we st- pick up at stage 13, the individual time trial from Miros to Miradio Di Azario, which was a 33K relatively flat stage with a very, very steep 2K climb at the finish to the point where they were doing bike changes and whatnot. Um, very, very hard day last of the um, Tuesday a week ago, I believe. And... Primos took the Primos won the stage. He beat American Will Barta on the CCT C team by one second. And Will rode really good. Hopefully, William Barta, as they like to call him over in Europe. Hopefully he gets signed by somebody. He's out of contract because CCC's folding up. So hopefully the kid gets a ride. Nelson Oliverio was second. And Hugh Carthy, I have to apologize. The last thing I was calling him Mick Carthy. Um, it's actually Hugh Carthy was fourth. Richard Carapass. Took a bit of a packet that day, that Tuesday, and ended up seventh. So the overall was <clears throat> Primos, Carapace at 39 seconds, Carthy at 47, Dan Martin at a minute 42, and Enric Mass at 323, which is kind of sets the stage going forward. Um, These time trials were really predictive, not only in, in all, all three of the Grand Tours, but especially this one, as that put Roglic in first place yeah, for I, that moment. And uh, also I noticed... When we were talking about the, uh, you said, what the hell were they thinking in that piss poor uh, bike change in the um, in the Giro this time? You mean in the tour? In the tour? In the tour, right? Yeah. For Roglic, and yep. this time it was like done really yeah, well. Yeah, he got it right. You this can time. tell they they went back yep. to the bus and Absolutely. said, "You guys got to get your shit together." Absolutely, no. It was it was a good, um, nasty, horrible climb at the finish. It was, uh, I, I think, there were spots that 30%, were over twenty percent. Yeah, thirty percent. Yeah, it was really, really, really ugly. And and uh, a lot of the guys did on their TT bikes. It was pretty impressive. And like I said, Will Bard of the American had just an incredible <laughs> ride. Certainly should get him a contract with somebody in the world tour, but that remains to be seen. I don't think Froome, uh, I think he wanted a bike change, but didn't get it. Remember when he went by there at that point and he was looking around, Yeah, slowed down and there wasn't a bike for well, him. Well, Froome, he pissed people off over there because he said he did it at half speed. He was just kind of going through the motions and, you know, my words, not his. But, I mean, he wasn't there to win this thing. He wasn't even there. I mean, Froome's kind of getting back to where he needs to be. Froome, we'll talk about Froome a little bit in a bit, but... um. Boy, he rode just an incredible, he rode an incredible supporting role for Carapace and, and he, and sure he deserves, did. you know, for a guy going out, going to another team, he could have phoned it in. He could have just went through the motions this entire tour and nobody would have said anything. The fact that he laid it on the line every day, drove at the front, worked work like, literally worked like a domestique was, was really, really impressive. A guy that's won as many grand tours and, and, and has the, the Pomerage he has is, is just really, really incredible. As he said during the Welta. I wouldn't ask these guys to do anything that I wouldn't do for them. He's a class act. Love him or hate him. The guy gets the shit done every time, every time out on to stage 14. Yes. That was a 205 kilometer ride from Lugo to Orani or Oranis trying to do the Spanish, right? But it is what it is. Ah, you're sounding good. Yeah. Rolling, rolling group away. <clears throat> Obviously there's always going to be groups away. Every one of these days at the Velta um, group of six. Stayed away. There was an uphill finish. Pretty, pretty nasty uphill finish. They had, they had gotten a decent gap. It was a really good stage again. And Tim Wellens from Lotto gets a second stage win over Michael Woods of EF. Uh, Steve Barr, the, the, the ex-World Cross champion and, and great classics guy, got the third. Dylan Van Barr from Ilios fourth. And Mark Salar came in there in the solid fifth. Another guy who had just an absolute great Velta. Um Movie star, two wins on the year, both of them Salar. That, that regardless of what they did at the Grand Tours, as far as winning team competitions, um, boy, they got to be disappointed at, at headquarters at Movie Star. But uh, GC stayed the same. You know, was it just a good, really solid day? Really good. All these stages. If you didn't watch this, if you didn't get a chance to watch this stuff live or watch it on. 
go back. All the uh, extended highlights are up on YouTube and stuff. Definitely check them out because because the Velta Velta Espanol was very very good this year for Tim, sure. Tim Wellens had a, a great Welta. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, two stage wins. Rode great for Lotto. Saved their race. That's what they wanted. Had uh, some good time guys trials. Incredible. Yeah, yeah got guys just just awesome, awesome. All righty then. And let's move on to stage 15, 230 kilometers from Moss. The Pueblo de Sanabria, I believe is how it's pronounced. And this, is, this was the longest day. This is the longest stage of the tour. 230 kilometers. Really rolling up and down the whole time. Big group got away. Cold, wet, miserable, shitty day. Um, in the end, it came down to Jasper Philipson from UAE having another, you know, had a, they, they've had a great year. Another good win for him. Pascal Ackerman came in second with Yannick Stemel from uh, Quick Step in third. GC stayed the same on these kind of days. Cold, wet, miserable, nasty. Um, Gil Martin was up the road getting more um, getting more KOM points. He pretty much sewed that up. And um, it was just just a, you know just one of those long days. You, the Velta doesn't normally do 230 day, 230 kilometer days much anymore. And I think the riders. The riders were definitely hurt at the end of this day, especially because it was cold, windy, wet. Yeah. You know, is that definitely they're not lying when they say the rains in Spain come mainly on the plains. <laughs> they definitely did. Another little side note, real quick. It was announced this day that Ian Standard, uh, Yogi from from Ineos, announced his retirement because of rheumatoid arthritis. Just was that bad that he just can't get ahead of it, can't can't get on it, and he's got to got to announce his retirement. Yogi. Uh, Yogi was one of the strongest rollers in the bunch for Ilios and Sky. Guy famously outwitted three. Uh, he was in a breakaway at Het Newsblad a few years ago. Het Vogue, I still call it Het Vogue. One of the Belgian semi classics. He got away with three um, quick step guys, and he out out boxed them to the All finish. Three of them, yeah, right? yeah, won the stage. It was awesome, awesome. Next day was stage 16, 162K romp through the mountains. And, and I, I made special note on this because it started in Salamanca. And if you're, you know, anybody that's watching is familiar with Breaking Bad, that's probably where Hector Salamanca was from. You know, the bad guy with the bell. If you watch Breaking Bad, yeah, the, you know, Hector, yeah. the, the the dad. But, you know, I'm, I'm getting off no, course no, that there. that was good. Cramping up in my leg already. Um, Salamanca to... Civedad Rod Rodrigo, I believe, is how it was pronounced. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Um, jump in, Billy. Man, come on. I feel like I'm carrying the show. Yeah, like, you are. I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I, I was so like busy. You selling seem lights. tired, brother. You seem. You know, uh, I'm I'm with you, man. I'm going. Keep going. You know, you're doing great. I appreciate it. Um, another group away brought back 25k to go. Uh, Remy Cavagna takes off with like 20k to go and just drives it till. I think they called him at like 2K to go. It was really impressive. The dude was was steady 50, 60K the whole time with the group behind him. And ended up coming down to basically a, a, a bunch sprint of what was left. And um, Magnus Court Nielsen from EF wins another stage. EF had a great, great Velta with Primo sneaking in there and basically a bunch sprint and grabbing some bonus sections, which was bonus seconds. He showed some power there. Incredible. The I mean, he, he, he the dude's like, not letting what happened at the tour happen again. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah. He, he pushed the, what, maybe three seconds there. At the yeah. End. Well, he got the, I think it was a six second time bonus, which definitely helps. And then Rui Costa, ex world Portuguese world champion was, was ended up third, but he was relegated due to, uh, you know, the UCI. He, if he you, supposedly if you went brush, out of his, yeah. yeah if, you, if you brush against the guy he, by, he, by a millimeter, you get relegated he now. Went in the out UCI. of his lane. Well, you know, this, this race, um, again, was, you know, time bonuses had a big factor in it. And all three of the grand tours, uh, you could say that. And um, just a side note, um, all three Grand Tours, um, the winner, if you accumulate all the differences between first and second, it was less than two minutes. For all three. For all yeah, three. I was, I was going to touch on that later. I'm glad you brought that up. Every Grand Tour this year, um, first, second, and third, I believe, well, first, second, and third in short were well under 30 seconds. Yeah, which is just, you know, we, we were treated uh, regardless of what, you know, I mean, it, it sucks it had to be this way. But I call it the 2020.2 season was just incredible. I mean, absolutely some of the best racing I've ever seen in my life. Agreed. And, you, know, you know, it sucks it's, today. There isn't any more. I know. Well, there isn't any more till Wednesday. And that's uh, Wednesday is Jar Mark Across in Belgium. Uh, I think it's a super prestige race is Wednesday. That's always held on the 11th day of the 11th month of the, 
you know, of Veterans Day. And I think I'm not sure what it's called in Belgium, but they celebrate it obviously too. Um, but getting back to the stage real quick, Dion Smith from Mitchelton Scott was moved up to third then. Um, this was this was another one of them kind of transition days. It was really, really good at the end. There was only 50, 50 to probably 75 riders left. And um, there are a lot of work in the Peloton to bring this thing back. Movie star Ilios at the front driving. Um, it was just it's just a really good, you know, uh, mouse chasing the cat kind of day. It was just a, a really good stage to watch. Definitely go back and watch a little bit of stage 16. If for nothing else, just to see Remy Cavagna at the, at the end there, just holding the Peloton off. Till. He, along with Tim Wellens, was, was yeah, a standout. Yeah, absolutely, sure. absolutely. Throughout the, the whole Welta. You know, now we're getting into some nasty hills. Stage 17 was... Um, Stage 17 was very hilly, 178K. It was Segurios to Alto della Cova Tila, I believe. And anytime there's an Alto on it, pretty much means you're ending on the hill. There was a big group away. Um, you know, it was another attacking day, nonstop, absolutely nonstop. Well, there were six guys away, right? Uh, I'm not sure how stage? many came in. I'm not sure how many came in at the end together. But it ended up being David Gadu won the stage for FDJ. Um, I was um, he he had been another good tour. FDJ had a pretty good tour with Gino Mater, Gino Gino Mater, I believe, a Swiss kid on NTT got the second with Eon Izagiri coming in third from Astana. Another one, another guy had a great tour, and GC stayed the same. Carapace actually moved up to twenty four seconds back because this was the day he was doing some serious attacking. He he, he took off with three k to go. Nobody could follow, and just was. Um, just was incredible. I thought maybe to the, you know this was the day. This was actually Saturday. This was Saturday. I I know I I missed. They some all days had here. their jackets on too yeah. before they got to the summit. Yep. Uh, Solar attack late. Got a, he got across to that front group, but then he got popped late in his climb. Climb was really ugly. But this was a day that Carapaz. This was this past Saturday. I thought Carapaz might have something in the tank to take it back, but he ended up. He just ended up just a little bit short, and they definitely had um they definitely had uh, Primos on the ropes a little bit, but. A little bit too just little barely. Too late. Yeah. Just barely. You know. And then um we'll move on to stage 18, which was yesterday. That was uh Hipperdome somewhere to Hipper Hipperdome della Zer Zervella, I believe, to Madrid. Circuit, circuit stage once you get into Madrid, 139k, full progression in, you know, full possession or possession. Um Full group in and they stayed together. They did the normal last yeah. day stuff at a grand tour. You know, they shook hands and took all kinds of pictures and stuff. And anyways, it ended up coming down to a bunch group, bunch sprint like I knew it would. And our boy Sam Bennett got pipped at the line by Pascal Ackerman from Bora by literally a centimeter with Max Canner from Sunweb in third. Another team had a great, absolute great, great tour. Um, Phil, Phil, Jasper, Jasper Phillipson in fourth with um, Sutherland in fifth. Normally, normal last day, Wellens and a bunch of Connie riders were off the front, what like they were all the whole time. And, you know, the, the Continental teams in this race were shown every day. Yep. Uh, final GC came down to Primos repeating as Velta champion with Carapace 24 seconds. Hugh Carthy at a minute 15. Jill Mar or, uh, Dan Martin in 243. Top five for Israeli Startup Nation, which was excellent. And Rick Moss at 336. Also a young Jersey rider. Mountain Jersey went to Jill Martin with Kofidis, had a great, absolutely great Velta. It really sucks he didn't win a stage, um, but, you know, he might have won a stage. I got to go back and look the last week because we missed a week. And young rider on Rick Mass, team was Movistar like always. Like always. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. Combative rider was Jeremy Cavagna. He definitely deserved that. Definitely. And the New Jersey Award, which doesn't exist, but we're going to say it exists, is the silver jersey for the oldest rider, the oldest rider category above 40. And of course, that always is going to go to Alejandro Valverde. He almost great, won that one stage. They yeah, tried, they I mean, tried. he had a, another grand tour with all three winners on rim breaks. Um, <laughs> bless you. Great grand tours this year. All three were under a minute for first and second, which was pretty incredible. I'm not sure where we ended up the last show, but let's jump back to stage 11 real quick, which was... Villa Velorosa a la de la Ferradonna. And that was uh, that was David Gaudu's first win with Mark Solor in second. Um, another Sunwood rider in third. Actually, Sunwood rider, riders in third and fourth. And this was a hill, a very hilly day, 170K, four climbs. Jill Martin was away collecting points all day. Uh, this was a day where Primos and Carapaz had the same time. So they actually ended up with the same time. That was that was incredible. You Again, know. you know, in general, uh, 
they were three grand tours and they also survived in spite of of COVID, right? Well, so, yeah. And, and that's, and that's the, the important thing that, that I got out of this. Absolutely. And not to mention <clears throat> the fact that I don't think this Tour de France and the Spain are, are owned by the same company, ASL. Yeah. They have their bubble shit down pat. They, they really are on point with keeping guys kind of locked down, keeping the, the public out. Um, Giro d'Italia, not so not good. Not so good. I mean, the Italians, but it is what it is. No disrespect, they Billy. Did I mean, they kind of, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they did a great job. They had some positives, but, but everybody ended up recovering and being fine. Um, at the Velt, I think the last the last test day, the last rest day a week ago, I don't think they had any positives at all. They did which not. was out of almost seven hundred tests, which is it is what it is. You know, re, you know, read into it for what you want to do. W- one stage I want to talk about was stage twelve. That was uh, the stage of the Anglerou, and that was one hundred nine k. Ang- Anglerou is one of the hardest climbs in Europe, if not the world, on a bicycle. I mean, there's literally sections of that climb where you're at period. 23, 25%, which is, it's just almost impossible to even describe to anybody what- How the hell did they do that 15 years ago with the gearing that they had? Oh man, well, they talked about that on on Lance's podcast about how they were doing that like a 39, 26 and happy to have it. And now these guys are having, guys are doing that stage with a 36 in the front and and, and a 30 30 or 32 in the back, if not bigger, which is just, you know, that's recreational gear, you know, and these are the best in the world. You know, this was a stage, you know, Hugh Carthy got the stage win for, e, for EF and it was just an awesome win. He jumped away late. He, he made it stick. He tried all that time to get to get away. He ended up getting away with with Alexei Vasov in second with Astana, who's another guy who had a great tour. It, this was just definitely one of the, you know, this thing, this climb averages 10.5%. And there are sections at 22 plus, which is, like I said, is just beyond absolutely too too much to even... The average the average rider has no clue what that's about. Um, the Americans at the second rest day, which was a couple weeks ago, Sepp Kuss from Durango was in there at 14th. Will Barda was yet to make his move up, but he you know he's in 25th. TJ was in in 99th. Ian Garrison with Quick Step, you know, just had a really good solid Grand Tour. Anonymous just driving at the front for Quick Step for Sam Bennett at 117th, and Logan Owen on EF was 126th. And, you know, the thing I take away from the Americans in this tour was everybody just rode real solid. Everybody did their job. Um, You know, I I think I think what we have in Europe right now from America is real solid, is real good. So who 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 were the Americans at the end of the day? At At the the end of the day, um, the end of the day, when it was all set and done, Sepp Kuss came in 16th at 16 minutes. Will Barta came in 22nd at 50. Logan Owen came in 105th at three four at, at, at three hours forty five. Ian Garrison came in one twenty seventh at I'm not even sure of the time. It was it was literally two stages down. And TJ Van Garden was in there a little bit better than Ian Garrison at, at, at one thirteenth, I believe. But they all finished. They all did great for their team. Yeah. Um, real quick, also in the middle of all this was the European Cross uh, Euro, Euro Champs yesterday. This past weekend in Holland. And the ladies on Saturday was was uh, Carmine or, or Carmen Carmen uh, Alavario that rides for Matthew Vanderpool's team Phoenix Phoenix Alpes Alpeson. She ended up getting her first Euro Championship jersey. I mean, this this girl's a beast, man. She is just so nasty. That, that strong. team is amazing, man. They're- yeah, I mean, Continental team. They're going to be in all the major races next year. It's going to be really interesting to see what they end up doing. Anna Marie Worst was second with Luc- Luc- Lucinda Brand in third. The all Dutch top three in 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 the you know in the homeland like that that definitely was good for them. Yesterday the men's race was the uh, the, the Belgians ruled it for the most part. Um, Ilias Erbit took his first uh, elite Euro jersey with uh, Mike Michael Van Thuenhaal in second. With Lars Vanderhaar, the little guy from Holland, came in third. With um, with Lawrence Sweek and Toon Arts rounding out the top five. So you had, you know, four Belgians and one Dutch, which is pretty much how it is till Vanderpool comes back for sure. Um, pretty much just live cross here from here on out. You know, there, there's still going to be a race at least every weekend for sure. And we'll go from there. Um, let's talk about our sponsors. Yeah. Special shout out to um, Lupine North America.com, of course. And it is the season as we always talk about. And um, of course, uh, GorchatiUSA.com. Did you happen to see the uh, new Gorchati e-bike, the road bike? I did. Looked pretty slick. Yeah. 
kind of kind of psyched for that. And then uh, of course, Deluxe Bikes, Josh Zaring Studios, and um, yeah, special thanks to you, John. Uh, this has been fun, great. We're going to continue this. I, I love this talking about these races. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta apologize to the viewers. I mean, I I didn't go far enough back in my notes. I, I I'm kind of really pissed off That's at myself. We've both been busy. Working. Well, it has been. It's been <laughs> it's been a pretty busy two weeks, and there's just a lot of shit going on in the world. Obviously, um, you know, it's tough to keep your mind focused on what the important stuff is. Cycling. Uh, the women's challenge was the last three days, also in Spain. Uh, three day little stage race and stuff. It ended up being uh, Lisa Brennier. Uh, a, a German, a German woman won that with Elsa Borghini in second and Lorena Webus, I think in third was the women's challenge of Elta. Hopefully that grows into a little bit more than just a three day romp around Madrid, hopefully for the, for the ladies. Um, Hugh Carthy from EF ended up third on the box. First, first time doing something like that in his career. Yeah. Just an incredible ride for EF. I mean, as much as I'm, I'm not a huge EF team fan, they had they had a really good return to racing with with uh, from 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 the COVID break. They did really well. I think the two best domestiques, in my opinion, at the Velta was Sepp Kuss. Obviously, I mean he did it two for three, and yeah, and I got to give I got to give mad props to uh, to Chris Froome. I mean he just rode every day at the front for for Carapace. He wouldn't have had to do it. Nobody would have said a word. The fact that this guy's leaving, going to Israeli startup nation, um, he had nothing to prove at all. And every day he was at the front early on when, when the coverage would first come on. Um, there's Froomey at the front driving like a domestique. Yeah. And it was really impressive to say the least. But and team, all, go ahead. How, I'm about, sorry, how about all the guys that um, did well in the Tour de France and that showed up again here at the Welta? They all did pretty good. They right? all did, they all did well. Yeah, yeah, they all did well. I mean, it's uh, there was a little bit of a, a go back and forth on, you know, if the Olympics happen next year, fingers crossed right after the tour on who will do well in Japan at the Olympics. And I got to go. I mean, regardless of the distance, I, I hate to disagree with Johan Bruniel because the dude is a genius. I mean, regardless of what he's done in his past, I, I could care less. I mean, I think the guy just knows more what's going on with cycling than, you know, 100 people combined could even hope to know. But I mean, he he predicts that. Whoever comes out of the tour and goes to the Olympics won't do so well. I got to go with, with with Georgie Hincappy doing the same thing he did this year. I think I think your Olympic champion next year comes out of the tour, and I think you know. I, I mean, I don't know what Matthew Vanderpool is going to do. I, I don't know what the course is in, in Japan. I haven't looked at it yet or anything. It may be really hilly. It might take these guys out of the equation. But well, certainly I, if this season is any indicator, the guy coming out of the tour is going to be is going to probably be on bet on, on decent form. But again, yeah. it's going to be a full year next year if it starts out the end of January into uh, February. Yeah. I mean, they're not making the trip to Australia. We predicted that two weeks ago when, when you asked me about, you know, Crystal Ball. And, Is and that when we I hit it. Primos? Yeah. Well, yeah, you did pick <laughs> Primo. So I got to give you credit so, there, Billy. So no, it was you, good, good stuff. If you go back to the Tour de France and you look at the two predominant teams there, you had uh, UAE, of course, mm -hmm. and then you had Yumbo Isma. Yep. Okay. So then you move ahead to the Giro d'Italia. And um, who would you say the two teams were there? Obviously, with well, Gagan Hart with Ineos, yeah, and then um, and then Sunweb, right? Yeah, I mean they had just you know for a young team, for a team that that you know average age is like twenty six. They they got to be you know the management in Holland's got to be really really happy with how Sunweb's second part after, of the season is gone after after Teo Gagan Hart. From yeah. Ineos, you had Yai Hindley. And yeah, he's not going and, anywhere. And Wilco Kelderman. Yeah, no, and, and and they had, I think the five or six guys from Sunweb that finished Velt, I think every one of them had a top five, which is which is saying something. I mean, obviously, getting on the box is what matters to these teams, getting that publicity. But to put a young kid first Grand Tour, and he's ending up getting, there was there was one kid in the Velta, and I, and, and I apologize, I can't remember which one it was. I, I actually think it was the uh, the, the British kid on, on Sunweb. I think he had like two two top fives, two top sixes in his first Grand Tour. That's saying something. That that's the legit, you know. And and the teams are not going to push these kids to develop quickly. They're still young. You know, these are 22, 23 year old kids. I mean, hell, my son's twenty. I mean, this is when you think about it that way. These are young guys, and, and they got a lot of development ahead of them, and they're just going to continue to get better because they like, got confidence. Like I said now. last time, they got I, confidence. I don't even think I was allowed out of the house by myself. No, you. 
The they, way we're going this morning, neither one of us should be out of the house. But that, I mean, it just seems like we're driving. You know, we apologize. We're dragging our asses. I mean, this is horrible. It's been um, a long three three grand tours. Man. Yeah, you know all this all this football that's been going on. I haven't even really spent any time watching it because there's been so much cycling. So in my life, all of a sudden, there's a distinct change for me, uh, especially with the availability of of cycling um that's that's either you know on on smart tvs or wherever you're watching it but like all of a sudden i've lost interest in football and um that's a godsend and gained interest well penn state has something to do with that yeah i can't bear to watch that but like i man i'm gonna be watching cycling next year almost all year long right yeah absolutely i mean it you know obviously no trips to australia in january which isn't a surprise because i mean i think the entire continent's going to be locked down for five years um <laughs> but the end of january into february i expect it to start back up in earnest and it's going to feel kind of like an old season from back in the day back when the guys just started up kind of a little on the chunky side if you go back and look at the scenes from the 70s and 80s these guys would show up a yeah, little all a little heavier you know a little fresh off the party scene yeah right, yeah you right know the absolutely and and i think uh <laughs> well here's a, a great great quote from yesterday and i want to look it up to get it right because it's worth getting right because any whenever whenever you quote whenever you quote sean kelly the great sean kelly you make it right. And and one of the great quotes I heard yesterday on the Velta coverage was, you can always tell the riders way down on general classification. They have the best suntans. That's awesome, <laughs> dude. That, that is just That's what good. it's all about. You know, King Kelly, the greatest classic rider of all time in my book. And that's open for argument, I'm sure. But um, no, the season was good. The season was a great attacking season. It, it seemed to go by in the blink of an eye, even though there was a lot of races squeezed in there. Um, starting, starting late July, early August. All the Continental teams, in my opinion, the ones that needed to perform to keep their sponsorship and stuff did great. Obviously, Alpes and Phoenix won the Continental World Prize, so they're going to pretty much be in everything. So what are you expecting from them next year? I expect Matthew Vanderpool to make a huge splash at the Tour de France if he stays healthy. I mean, they've already, literally the Belgian-Dutch press started that rival and started it back up between Wout and Matthew literally two seconds after that, that the, the winning of that prize was announced. And this tour starts in Brittany starts up on the coast uh there is a really good chance that one of those two guys has a yellow jersey on seven months from now eight months from now very good chance very very good chance and then that's just going to make for going to make for really good racing because jumbo visma is not going nowhere as a team and alpes and phoenix is no joke uh you know they're they're not they're not a joke team they're they're, they're bringing in some legitimate riders i think they signed some more um you know they got they're, they're going to do a lot of these big races so they have to have a solid squad we didn't talk about those two two people and i was trying to get it right last time it was pitchcock um pitcock is pitcock. on I ineos um he, he's gonna be at force oh absolutely and what about the kid that broke his uh, uh and 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 uh, Yvonne, and Yvonne and pool um evan pool is gonna be another one that more than likely i believe evan pool goes back to the giro and tries to win that keep an eye on him folks oh it's just the, the young guys i mean we could talk for an hour on just the young guys alone that are coming you know, I believe in another year or two, Sepp Kuss is probably up there looking for looking for a Grand Tour win. Um, you know, this this Will Barta showed he's young. He's 24 years old. I mean, I mean, the only guy that's won anything of note this year over 30 or at 30 was was Primos. And it's only because he started cycling like 10 years ago. He's still a relative baby compared to a lot of these guys. You got, you know, Gagan Hart, you know, Jai Henley um wow i mean you know you look at the teams that have done well this year i mean yumbo visma won pretty much everything that wasn't nailed down with if you look at what wow has done and what what primos has done i mean yumbo yeah they would have liked to win the tour obviously but but coming back and repeating at the velta was no joke almost winning you know just just losing flanders by a whisker to to, to matthew I'm sure still sticks in Walt's crawl but it is what it is he had a great season other one milan san remo one strata bianchi won a whole bunch of races, did well at the tour. Um, a couple of takeaways for me, especially with these younger riders, is um, there's a couple of trends that seem to be emerging. One is, of course, um, structured training, structured training and marginal gains. Um, and that's what they're doing. They're not, you know, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, doping or anything. It's about structured training, precise um, uh, thought about marginal gains on the bike. Whether it's rim brakes or whether it's you know socks higher yeah. up, uh, et cetera, you're et cetera. sleeping, your diet. These guys weigh everything. These guys' diets are 
just beyond it. it we, we couldn't live like that. I mean, you, I, I know one thing about you, you and me, Bill, we, we like to eat. And I drink mean, beer. Well, like to like to eat, like to drink. I mean, these guys don't do any of that. These guys, um, these guys weigh everything. These guys, uh, you know, the younger guys have all done. They they've known nothing but power. They've known nothing but the performance side of the sport as far as knowing your numbers and that. Um, it's not a surprise where we're at with the under twenty six or under twenty sevens. I mean, it's it's it, it's a it's a bad time to be up thirty up in, in this sport <laughs> and think you're going to win races because the young guys are probably going to beat you to the line and. Um, that's not to say anybody over 30 is not going to win races anymore. I mean, Primos has proved that, but boy, I, I mean, I would not want to be a 30 year old look, staring, looking for a contract in a year or two. The other thing that came, became apparent to me was the aspect of cross training and guys coming from different sports. That's also important. Um, you know, that Michael Woods is basically yeah, a runner, a, a runner yep. and look how well he did oh. in the Welta. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And then he's going to, he's moving over to, uh, Israeli startup along with with Chris Froome and, and and Dan Martin's there and and they're putting in uh, Daryl Impey from South Africa for Mitchelton Scott. Um, they're going to have and, Boy, and there's, knows, there's other guys. Dan Martin has had a dig deep, doesn't he? Oh Holy man, Christ, I'm telling man. you, I got to give my award for for the ugliest faces in cycling. Oh, got Dan go, Martin. No, no, got to go to Hugh Carthy. Uh, oh okay, yeah, okay. yeah. You got to look up Hugh Carthy. I mean, yeah. man, but but I'm telling you, man, that kid just had it. He he had a great belt, and I expect to see. You know, it, it's just as as much as, like I say, I'm not a fan of EF, mainly because of their director, but the team itself, incredible. They've had, they had, you know, they made their sponsors very proud this year. They had good, they had good three grand tours. And I, I, there's a rumor mill. I mean, I think they got a little bit more money coming in um, for, for 20, for 21. It hasn't been announced yet, but you even look at AG2R, one of my favorite teams, AG2R Le Mondial is now AG2R Citron and they're spending money. You know, they're bringing in, you know, they got Greg Van Aramak coming in. They got a good classics team. And it looks like they had, they, they had a great, for, for a lesser, t- you know, for a lower tier world tour team, they had a really good, I, I thought they had a really good season. They had a really good tour in, in, in weeks after the tour. Um, FDJ pulled it out between, between what um, their sprinter did for what, what's his name, did it, it at, at Italy, winning all those stages. And David Gadu, Gadu gets two stage wins and actually, looks like he could give Tebow Pino a run for his money as far as team leader. Cause Pino always talks tough and like, yeah, I'm going to win this. I'm going to win that. And then he's abandoned within a week. So Matty was going to get tired of that eventually. Yeah. I think, you know? I think he may be, um, that was his last great hope there. I, I, I got to agree with you, Bill. I mean, you look at team wins for the year of teams, you know, Takuna quips quick step ended up with 39 victories in a three month season. That's, that's impressive. Does uh, Citrion still make the vehicle where all four wheels turn? Like they can, you know, boast about getting into small parking spaces. The the rear, yeah. when you turn the vehicle, yeah. the rear wheels turn like the front wheels turn. Yeah. Well, if it's in France, I can guarantee they still make it. They turn, I think, 90 degrees. The only yeah. development of anything in France is. Up, right, right. Yeah. That and just. Yeah. Right well, in. you have to because the average parking spot in France is five foot. So, you know, and they're usually pretty whacked out on cheap wine and, 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 and tobacco residue. So, you know, I mean, it is, it is what it is. I mean, the, the French are really good at developing a better cigarette and better cheap wine. But the Kuna Quick Step ended up with 39 victories on the year. Yumbo with 23, Bora with 21. That, that, I mean, that's saying something. That, that's a lot of, you know, that's, that doesn't leave a whole lot for some of these other teams. And then you look at Movistar, two wins. Same rider, Mark Salar. I mean, who would have ever in a million years thought Moby Star didn't, you know, they won a race at the start of the season at the Mallorca or one of, one of the races in the south of Spain or whatever, Mark Solar, and then he wins at one stage in the Velta, and that's their year. I mean, it's got to be the worst they've ever done times five, you know, and, and, and Moby Star in its various uh, jersey designs and sponsors has been around, I think, almost 40 years. So... There can't be too happy in Madrid or wherever the team base is right they, now. I'm they, sure they're, 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 they were in the bus going, well, at least we won the team. Again, the team well, they uh, were the most like, fine team at the Volta, too. I mean, the UCI was handing out fines like candy bars, like Harbo's. <laughs> it was terrible. It was on every, every day I'm listening to. You know why you're uh, throwing those water bottles yeah, anywhere that, but where and, you're and, supposed and to. And the, the Moby Star director was getting fined every day because he doesn't listen to the idiot UCI Commissar. What, which, leaning out of his vehicle that, and shit like that? That makes him, that makes him a Don't boss. Don't lean in, out of the vehicle. Yeah, that makes him a boss in my book but uh anytime but going into cyclocross this fall a couple americans jumping across i saw i, I read where Kurt, curtis white just headed back over to belgium to race which is awesome major 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 respect to curtis not sitting around um you know 
training in parks and wishing he was racing. He's going where the races are. And he said, you know, fucking I'm going to Europe and I'm going to race. And I'm sure Katie Compton's ending, you know, Katie Compton will be heading over soon. Her, her and Mark will go over and race in Europe. It's yeah. probably starting very soon. Um, they may never come back. They're yeah. still going well that, you know, she, uh, Katie's getting to the end of it there at 40 plus years old. She's, but she's not going to pass this opportunity. No, no. Me. And she's the best. She's still the best U S girl in, in my opinion, by a long shot. When you think about that. So I want to have a, awesome. Uh, I want to have a time trial on the tour to Gretna next year, maybe uh, where it's a real steep finish. So I want to see people change their bikes from no, time. We don't, trial. We don't want to see that. <laughs> we don't want to say that Billy, that, that would be, yeah, I'd be the only one that has both. <laughs> right road. Yeah. yeah. They'll you'd be surprised at guys that got TT bikes hanging in their garages that are 15, 20 years old. I mean, they're not modern, but you got to use them. You know, you got to show up with that TT bike and tool around on it like you know what you're doing. You know, all maybe you get them little uh, little pieces of cotton, cotton hanging out of your nose with whatever on them, like the old timers used to do and shit. You know, the eucalyptus or something, whatever the that eucalyptus was. Oil. We're starting to roll. You know, we're, 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 we're an hour in. We finally kind of woke yeah, up. The coffee's kicked man. in. All the guys that finished up the Giro that went home that could get into, into a country that they can still yeah, ride. So what what are they going to do now? So okay, well the riders are going places where they can ride. They're not going to sit in their trainers for eight hours like they did in June, July. Going to place go to a place where they can get out of if they have to. Oh, absolutely. For next season. I I mean I which I may don't not know. be the United States. I don't know. No, well, <laughs> like if you're a Canadian rider, you're not going to come down to the United States no. for sure because you'll. Well, never I mean, and this is the thing too. You gotta. With the Australia deal, one of the reasons why they're not going to Australia is you, you need you got a two-week quarantine when you go into Australia, you're coming from Europe, and then you can train and race and whatever, and then you need a two-week quarantine when you go back. So there's a month, you know, any way you slice it, there's a month of your season gone. Yeah. So they couldn't get any teams to go to tour down under, you know, um, the the Cadell Evans race or anything. I mean, it sucks, but there's a good chance none of these races come back. I mean, I think financially, some of these races were probably on the cusp of no, not making it anyways. Point. And when you miss a year, um, you know, now, now Mitchelton Scott is changing their structure and going to be green edge cycling, but Bianchi is switching over to them. So they're going to be on Bianchi's next year. Sunweb, Sunweb's going to be on Scott's. And still no Orbeas. No, no Orbeas. And that's a fact, you know, Billy, I checked and there's nobody racing Orbeas at, at the top level. And then, and then uh, Yumbo Visma is going to be on Cervellas. And there's already been pictures of Wout out on his new Cervella training this past week, which you know, that's kind of a gray area there. I'm really surprised they didn't tape the logos and stuff and have him out on that bike because there could be some ramifications there with the UCI and stuff. You're not allowed to do that. You know, you're not really Good allowed point. to be riding next yet year's stuff. Yet another opportunity yet. for a fine. Absolutely. I I'm guarantee you somebody in Switzerland is is getting firing up the uh, the the, co the adding machine just to see how much money they can squeeze out of Yumbo Visma. <laughs> that's how they do things. But I mean, you'll have world championships cycle cross in, in January, February, end of January, somewhere in Europe. I'm not sure where it's at this year, but they'll have it since they had Euros. It just won't be nobody there. Um, not to overshadow what you said, though, but I think there's another trend in place where um, cycling is becoming um, more available, whether it's YouTube or, you know, in cycling or NBC Gold or uh Fubo. Oh, there's certainly more coverage. And, I mean, and so I think that that uh, there's a new audience that's uh, that's been into this because obviously more people are out on their bikes now than ever. Yeah, and um, so I think there may be a new audience which may save the day for some of these races. It could be. I mean, to, just to counter your yeah. Oh no, no, I I agree with you. And I mean, it saves some of these teams. I mean, you know, obviously, um, obviously NTT's claiming that they have a sponsor coming on board very soon, and I hope they do. Um, uh, what you about CCC is going away, but but Wanty Group Circus has stepped in and bought their license, so Wanty Group will be up in the World Tour next year, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Wanty Group team, and it still is going to be really good racing. You know, I'm I'm happy to represent today my Fayetteville 2022 World Championship Cycle Cross shirt, nice Fayetteville, shirt. Uh, Arkansas. The worlds are coming back to America. I didn't, I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime. Having went, having uh, been been a uh, been an observer at the Louisville Worlds back in 2013, me, Mister Joe, and the kid went down there, made a quick trip down, and watched uh, Sven Nice win his last world title, which was awesome. Also got to see yeah. guys like Mike Tanisa and, and Wout and 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 um, you know Matthew Vanderpool and 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 all the great all the great women from Europe and stuff come over here race a great course in Louisville with the water rising from the river. They did everything in one day, which was sketchy, but um, you know I expect. I expect um, Fayetteville to be really good in 22. Hopefully, every, you know, hopefully the world's back to normal by then. 
and everybody can come over here and race normally. You know, and, we'll and see. You'll be down there racing, representing. In the Hopefully, Masters category. there's supposed to be to a Masters that. Worlds, and and I mean, you know, I I plan on doing that. Hopefully for 22, but that's a long way off. I mean, I could be in a re-education camp by then or something. You never know. <laughs> um, there's a good chance, you know, I'll be at standing at you know, headed headed to the camp to be to get my mind right, maybe. But again, you know, I'm the guy bringing up politics. I apologize. But no, it was a great year. It was it was awesome doing this show pretty much every two weeks or so throughout the season with you, Billy. Um, There's great been sponsors. a whole bunch of um, American riders, too. That have done really well. Uh, yeah. You know, you go back to the Giro. You had Chad Haga, Joey Roscoff, Dombrowski, Larry Wabash. Brandon McNulty. Brandon McNulty. So there's yeah. there's a lot of things to follow. And, you know. I I know I did, and I know you did. We we both gained so much more knowledge, uh, and hopefully we were able to convey that uh, to the viewing audience about you know world teams, about race strategies, about Americans that are in it, and um, in general, um, making people more aware of uh, the excitement that we've all shared for the last 30 some years. Well, there's so much more to watch than just a lot of guys tune in. They say, oh, it's so boring. They're just riding along. It's like, well, even in Spain, I mean, the scenery again, I mean, when, when you're riding by churches that have been there, you know, 1500 years and these little villages that literally look like they have not been touched by time. Um, Spain's just as beautiful as Italy and France in my book. I mean, you know, this was the first year that I really watched the entire Velta from start to finish. And, and I was glad Same I did. Here. I was yeah. glad I did. I mean, it was just, um, there's, I mean, hopefully what people come away from this is, yeah, it does seem boring. It does seem kind of monotonous as like there's four guys are just trading off and they're just riding. They're just riding bikes. I can do that. No, you can't. Um, the, the, this, but there's so much to learn what's going on back in the bunch, what's going on at the, the rear of the bunch, what's going on in the middle. It's like a travel know, log, man. Still and, learning. And, and I mean, some I, of the, um, you know, some of the geographic features, the mountains and, and the rivers and so on and so forth were different. They have a different look than North American continent. And that was really interesting to me. And then I love all the uh, history and the architecture, especially I love it when they build these uh, cities surrounded by walls and stuff, like up on a little mountain. Oh, there was peak. a great one a, a day or two ago in Spain. It was awesome. There's you yeah, know, that's the, the aerial shot. Yeah. And it's, I mean, you just think about what happened there in the last, you know, like up think until about what it was ago, a thousand years, years ago. Man, yeah, people are incredible. up on the walls looking around and shit. Yeah. We think to- we think we got problems. We think, you know, the That's- world revolves around. I mean, we have no clue. You know, 200 years ago, some guy was crawling out of his hut right now, hoping that he could eat today exactly. and something didn't eat him or somebody didn't come along and, and, and kill him and take his property and shit. We got it so good. I mean, we with all the crap in the world and all the shit going on, um, we got it pretty damn good. And, and we'll always have it good. Humans are like roaches, man. You can't kill us. We're, no, we'll be fine. I agree. I agree. I mean, we'll be just be riding different bikes and shit, but if this, this, none of this stuff's going anywhere in the foreseeable future. Shut up. That's a dirty word. Um, but, but I mean, all joking aside, it, it's, I mean, when I think back to the early, the, the, the mid, the mid eighties into the late eighties, just trying to, trying to catch some coverage of cycling and stuff like, you know, you've touched on this many times, Billy. I mean, we have so much access and again, it's a different time. I mean, we, you know, we show our age, we've been, we've been around a long time. We've been doing this. I mean, I would have never imagined, you know, we would have never thought 30 years ago that I could watch everything on, on, the, on this little, on this little handcuff here, this little uh, mind control device <laughs> and um, you know, stop telling me what to think you but anyways, I mean, there's just so much, so much opportunity to see so many cool things, not just cycling, everything. I mean, you can, but, but get out and do it. Don't sit in your basement, you know, in your, in your uh, stars and stripes onesie and not get, you know, get out, <laughs> get out and enjoy life. Because I'm telling you, man, there's so much awesome that, you know, the trees this year, the fall has been incredible. I mean, yesterday, 75 degrees, you today, know, 75 Saturday, degrees. We did 20 miles down at White Clay and around Fair Hill. And the trails are just so, they're just so nice. And yeah, it's beautiful. Out. And uh, there's so many people out and um, wow, just great stuff. I think people have real, I mean, you know, life is short. You know, you start to realize that you're not going to live forever. I mean, it's, I, I hate to break it to you millennials out there, but you are not going to live forever. You are going to die someday. So get out and enjoy life. That was my second quote for the day, which is time is an abstract concept created by mankind 
to monitor his own rate of decay. <laughs> and that's all it is. Spot on, Billy. Spot on. I mean, he's he's a lot of things and he's a philosopher now. It's incredible. That's why I like Martin. Yeah, the guy, the guy is just, you know, the, I, I've learned so much about Billy that scares me even more than what I knew before. Um, he gets better. He's like a fine wine, a fine vino. As long as I keep it. He's got the hat on, the, 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 the Gentile vino. This came out of the... Giro d'Italia, I was like stoked about my heritage again. I'm impressed. I mean, the guys realize he, he, he opened the book tutto. up and found out that somebody owes him something from the old country. You know, it takes us a while. We get rolling. I mean, you know, we started out slow today, but I think we're finishing strong. Well, what are we going to do next? That's the big question well, on viewers' minds. We're mind probably going to well be off, mine. you know. Well, after Yeah, so what are we going to do? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I It'd guess be tough because there's not going to be a lot to talk about, but cross. And just the comings and goings of, of what's going on in the cycling world or who's going where and sponsorship and shit. I mean, I don't know if you want to want to maybe wait to the end of January. Like I said, they may have to come, you know, they're going to come and try to confiscate my guns and shit. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Do top 10 shows. Yeah, yeah, we'll do something. We'll come up with something. I mean, there's going to be a lot happening, I think, going in. We'll see what happens in the world as far as the COVID goes and where that ends up now. And you know, if life gets back to what, whatever the new normal is and, you know, that's, we'll see. I All mean, right. I, I think there's going to be a lot of racing. I think the, the season, they proved that they can race. You know, the Velta proved that, the Tour proved that, the Classics proved that, that the racing isn't getting people In sick. our own Mid-Atlantic Super Series, you know, we had Absolutely. five really successful mountain bike yep. races. Guys and came out, raced, they went fun. home, they had, they had a good time. There's a race coming up the beginning of December up, up around the Hershey area, mountain bike race, a little bit of a pseudo cross race and stuff. Yeah, that, just a shout out for that, December 6th, it's uh, Warlock's Winter Revenge, and um yeah, you can have a team in there, so it's yeah. cool. If you haven't been riding a while, you can kind of hide yourself in a, amongst a couple it'll of other just good be riders. Cool. Yeah, it'll just That's what be, I plan on doing. Just be cool to get out and ride and 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 get get the camaraderie back. That's right back. over here I in mean, Palmyra. Thanks, Corey Schaefer. Yeah, it doesn't mean you got to kiss everybody in the mouth and give group hugs and shit. Show up and race your bike and go home, and, and you still remember what it's all about. Yeah, you bring your own beer, too. That way no one's coming over bumming exactly. a beer because they're yeah. like trying to stay yeah. away from you. Yeah, if you bring Coors cool. Light, nobody's coming over to you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's what yeah. I do. I, I I have an empty Coors Light can, and I just kind of hold it up, and they're like, "Ah, oh, shit! No, I ain't going over there." Yeah, they ain't going but then there. I got my iPad. But they still show up because the they need stuff. Yeah, you know, they never not come to Billy's house. Well, I got I got a see. Couple Billy's of, the only guy that when you show up at Billy's house, you actually charge him for shit with his name on it and logo. <laughs> Billy's the only guy like you come up. Hey, Bill, I came up with this great Gretna build decanter, but I'll sell it to you for twenty bucks. It's yeah. like I think I think Nate awesome. Boyer has uh, some Gretna Bill coffee that we're going to market. That'll so be pretty, pretty cool coming out. We'll, we'll get Josh can, so, Josh can mess that I up have, in the Keurig. I have three, <laughs> I have three or four uh, Heineken NAs, you know, and I have them in the front of the refrigerator and then I have all the good ones in the back. So somebody says, Hey, can I grab a beer? And I'm like, Hey, no problem. I, I don't your, know if I have much left. And yeah. they, and they come out and they go, all you had was Heineken. NA. Yeah, and, like, yes. and they left. Yeah. They, they didn't see all the good shit behind <laughs> it. Revealed your secret. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you just right. let the whole world know what's going on. Yeah. It don't matter. Nobody, Let's everybody. Do what I do. Don't refrigerate it and keep it out of sight. You know, everybody <laughs> shows up at Gretna Bills and takes shit, and then maybe a month later he gets paid. <laughs> that happens a lot, too. You know, little little inside inside industry secret Do you have there. any bikes yet, by the way? Got shit coming. They claim. I keep hearing that. You know, it's, it's you know, the, the ships, I think, are moored somewhere out in the Pacific waiting for the cost to go up or something. I mean, there there is stuff slowly I, I starting. Saw a, uh, Everything I, that I've gotten in the last month has disappeared pretty quickly. And, and it, I mean, it is what it is. Still busy with repairs. Still, you know, parts are starting to sort of flow a little bit. But anything that's popular, anything that the manufacturers use to make. New bikes, you know, stuff is just, it's just, you can't get it. Yeah. I mean, there, there's drabs. There's, it's not like it's completely not available, but I think for Christmas and the I mean, my feeling, my gut on this season is going to be, if you find something you want for Christmas for family members, something you damn well better buy it the minute you go in there. Because, you know, I had some BMX and some pump track shit come through in the last few weeks. And I told the people, it's like, look, I mean, I got people interested in this money talks, bullshit walks. First one cash in account, you know, counter buys it. And Everything's gone. Either everything's paid for for the holidays, you know, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Santa Claus will make a visit and but it's not going to be very good this year. It's not. I mean, if you find what you want, you better buy it because 
there's a lot of people looking for a very low number of, of goods. And I've been lucky enough, you know, I, you know, I brought Litsky in there with titanium, which is a very niche product and not everybody's going to buy tie, but I've been lucky enough to build a couple really nice tie bikes up. For, if you want to spend mine. 10 grand, you can get you. Yeah, <laughs> you, you don't necessarily got to spend that much, but there, there's a lot of options. I think, um, uh, the bread and butter stuff, the, the sub thousand dollar stuff is going to be tight going into the holidays and into the spring. I honestly don't think Bill, it resets till this time next year. If, if then that's a bold prediction, Because everybody in the world is looking for stuff. I mean, if the lockdowns continue and shit, hopefully people can still ride bike. I mean, a lot of these countries are going to the extreme where you're not even allowed outside. I saw that uh, Jane, Jane, Jane Wells did people. a special uh, out in the port of LA and this big uh ship coming in and it was loaded with these huge containers and inside the containers walmart they were no they were all pelotons yeah and and i'm like you know i really appreciate anything that gets people on a bike is great but i just i don't get the peloton thing because of the uh, continued expense yeah why not just get a trainer yeah for your bike absolutely and then you can still ride outside with it and stuff that you know peloton is 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 kind of like a drug you know, somebody's selling you Seems something it. to keep you strung out and stuff. I get it in the cities and that. I get it if you're in an area where you can't get out. I mean, if you go outside, you'll get, you know, well, right now the riots are quiet, but the riot season's coming soon here. So you got to stay inside and and um, you got to do your thing inside. And it's, it's I guess in the long run, it's as expensive as, as same as a gym or whatever, but I don't know. Yeah, thanks for tuning in again. Yeah. Uh, it was a great year Wrap for cycling, c- considering everything. A yep. great year for Grand Tours. Um, yeah. Uh, silver lining. I love it all. Find the positive from the negatives. And, and, and this was a positive for me, Billy. I, I love coming out here to the Josh's studio in beautiful downtown Mount Gretna, Timber Hills, and be able to do this. And little known real fact about this area within a mile or so of here was one of the largest, uh, Spanish American war encampments of training for the whole Pennsylvania national guard. The entire, this whole area was, was covered in troops a hundred plus years ago, which is more history for this area that people don't realize. And, uh, back when, uh, Coleman was like, um, the fourth richest man yeah. yep. in America yep. and it was all due to the, uh, iron ore mine yep. down the road in yep. Cornwall. And at that point in time in the 18th century, Cornwall was considered an industrial mecca for all of the developing North Americas because that was the only place you could get um, it's still the world iron, and you know you needed those for anchors, musket yeah. balls, yeah. and uh, yeah, everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's still the open pit over there in Cornwall, on the other side of Cornwall, at the, uh, the the furnace is still the largest uh, largest deposit of iron ore in, in in the Americas, and it's you know it's under 30, 40, 50 feet of water, but. You know, thanks to thanks, Agnes, 72. We appreciate that. Uh, but but all joking aside, there's so much history. There's so much cool shit. You know, next time you're out riding around this area, if you see a, a planker or a little sign from the from the state or something, stop and check it out because there is so much great history in this area. Um, I said this uh, and you'll remember when we first opened the bike shop up in 92 or whatever. I said, there's no reason why, you know, this can't become like Aspen of the East Coast. We've got the trails. We've got the lake. We don't have the altitude. We've got the history. Um, it's just just a wonderful place to live. And uh, and we're the, we're the opposite of that because out there, there's all that money and, and influence. And around here, it's a lot of poor people and stuff. So it's kind of the opposite. It balances speaking. out. I'm joking, but 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 all you know, you know, you're spot on, Billy. And that's the one thing I got to give you really credit for is the fact that if if we would have realized that our ideas 30 years ago could have made us multimillionaires, we should have acted on that. But of course, all we did was talk about it. And then, you know, I handed you another beer at the shop and then that was forgotten about. Mickey's malt. Mickey's malt. Let's not go there. That's a a nasty, that was one nasty Saturday afternoon at the the shop. Just like this show. But all joking aside, Just like this show. And just like when we started off introducing mountain bikes to this area. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, yeah, I always said this, once a great thing is done, it cannot be undone. And so even today's show, it cannot yeah. be undone. It's a great thing. Yeah. And when we started mountain biking, geez, I was one of like four or five people like riding around here, much to the uh, dismay of all the local residents at the time. It's like, get those things out of the way. Dude, woods. you and were I'm the like, grand, you know, I got to admit, Billy, you're the grandfather. I mean, I said, you were, there's no doubt about it that you were definitely uh, one know, of the founding is, fathers of mountain biking in this, this area. It's too great of a thing to pass up. It's great for everybody. And um, and sure enough, that has come to fruition. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, thank to our sponsors, Lupine, Best Light in America. 
or in the north in, in the world best light in the world gorchati and uh we have josh, bikes, by the way josh zero of course Josh Zero Studio has, has put up with our shit for the last three, four months. Has Thanks, done a great Josh. job. Appreciate it. And uh, it's, it was awesome, dude. I love coming out here and doing this. And we'll do and, some shows you know, before the season starts. Just like up. everybody else we kind of come in contact with, we have reignited the love of bicycles with Josh. Yeah. Josh, right? You became yeah, in love with bicycles Hell again, yeah. right? I tell you last time, man, it just isn't the first thing I think I about every day. Disease. I'm thinking about a different bike for each person. Well, it is it is a disease. They do have shots for that. Gravel bike, proud See, bike, that's the BMX, problem. I mean, it's just ruining bike. everything. I mean, you know, the, the gravel guys want their gravel bike to be a mountain bike, and then they bitch that they can't keep up with the group ride. And it's like, well, it's because you put tires that are three inches wide on your gravel bike. You know, I mean, uh... Although Aaron Barr said he put 47s on his gravel bike so he could keep up with Scott Gray on the downhills, and uh, he said doesn't seem to hold him back on the road. I think the new designs well, of tires roll a lot better. Well, that's because he's not human. Better. He's one of the strongest guys in the uh, area. That, that might have a little point. bit to do with it. But you, uh, you know, there's a, one thing I did want to do. And maybe we could do this at Christmas. Was uh, go over the 87 rules of the Velaminati. I always love those. Uh, you're familiar with them, of course. Yeah. yeah. Rule number one is don't be a dick. And rule number five. We were five, supposed to do this this past Christmas. Right. And we did. We, we, we want to do it. We want to ask Tap if we can do it up at yeah. the uh, Timbers in front the of the sure fireplace. Said it was okay. Let's do that. Okay. But we didn't do it. And then um, uh, rule number five is, of course, t- toughen the F up. And um, one of my, f- uh, my favorite ones is, um, you know, the proper number of bikes that one must own is either one of two formulas it's either n plus one and of course that's the number that you currently have plus one more or s minus one and that's the number of bikes that you have that will still allow you to be attached to your significant other separation minus one like if you get to the point where if you buy another bike that's it. We're done. Then you take one off bike off the table because it saves your relationship. Well, if it ever comes to that, you got to get rid of that negativity out of your life. And the bike usually isn't the negativity. I'm just saying. S minus one can have you dual know. meanings. And it's, it's tough one of those because, you know, yin yang things. People come in and they want tandems. And I always remind them just remember that bip, bip, bip is right behind you. You cannot ride away from it and act like you didn't realize she wasn't there. It's always there. So, Tread lightly on the tandem subject on the trails and stuff, when, you know, especially on the gravel and that. Because I got a very important comment from Taylor. Uh-oh. What do we do now? Josh rocks. Well, there's but no argument there. I, that's the best comment we got so far. Thanks, Taylor. It's <laughs> probably the only comment we got too. so far. <laughs> Well, see, and then there blows the theory that everyone that watches this doesn't know what's going on and pays attention. Right there tells you that we have some smart, smart viewers at the Gretna Bill Show. Right up the street here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's wrap it up, Billy. Take I gotta care, get to people. Work. Peace out. We got to go guys. do some work. I got to ship some more lights. They need the lights. Peace what out, everybody. Lights, Lupine lights. <laughs> Lupinenorthamerica.com. Peace out, everybody. Later, guys.